You've heard me say many times before that the only way you can improve your ability to speak English is by actually speaking with real people. And every time you hear me say this, you might think to yourself, yeah, that's great, but I don't know how to talk to people. So why don't you teach me about that? So let's listen to a short video clip that gives three practical tips for starting and maintaining a conversation with anyone. You should always start your conversation in the middle of the conversation. What that means is looking to the real world to actually have something to say to that person, or even better, ask them a question that requires real information. My personal go-to in a bar or restaurant setting is to ask them what they ordered. So the conversation will start something like, wait, that cocktail looks so good. Which cocktail did you order? Oh, okay, I was torn between getting that or the French 75, but I always get a French 75 and I'm thinking I should get something different, right? This place is known for the cocktails. Have you been here? Like, what have you ordered? What's good? So at this point, we already have the momentum going before I get into pleasantries. Hi, my name is Aya. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. Starting the conversation in the middle also allows you to do two different things. One, it allows you to gauge whether or not the person you're talking to is in the mood to talk to strangers in the first place. Because if they answer your question, I got a Cosmo, then you already know they're probably not feeling it and you can just say thank you and move on. But if their response is open and they say, oh, this is what I ordered, it tastes so good, you should order it too, blah, 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 then they're already sending you signals that they're wanting to continue the conversation or that they're at least open to it. Which brings up my second point, which is that starting the conversation in the middle means that your topic is already on the table and you don't have to think of something new to talk about. All right, my friend. Now, the woman in this video, whose name is Aya, A-Y-A, Aya, is touching on one of the most common challenges we face when trying to make conversation with new people. Figuring out what the hell we're supposed to talk about. So you might think to yourself, oh, should I talk about the weather? Or maybe their nationality or their age. Oh, I know. I'll talk about their occupation, like what they do for a living. Or maybe I'll talk about the latest news story. Whatever it is, it has to be something safe. Because I don't know this person and I don't want to offend them or bore them to death. But I am suggesting that we forget about all of that and either have something interesting to talk about before we even start the conversation. Or... Take a look at our surroundings and mention something that's relevant to the context of the current situation. And this is why I've said before that part of what makes someone interesting is that they're interested in life and the world around them. When you have your own interests, it's easy to bring them up in a casual conversation. I mean, think about what I do with this podcast. Whenever I see an interesting video, I don't just hit the like button and keep scrolling. I save the video and then share it with you in my next episode. Now, you may not respond or give me any feedback after listening to the episode, but each episode is essentially a conversation starter that gets you engaged and interested in hearing what I have to say. I'm not hitting you with the typical, hey guys, my name's Tony. Today, I'm going to teach you five phrasal verbs for restaurants. You hear that from every other teacher out there, and you hear it so frequently that it's no longer interesting. You want to hear something that will entertain you or make you think a bit deeper because you're already past the stage where you need to listen to audio lessons about basic vocabulary words. And it's the same with conversations. People are so used to the, hey, my name's Tony. What's your name? Where are you from? What do you do for a living? Oh, that's great. We hear it all the time and it's no longer interesting. So instead of doing that, start with something that you are actually interested in. You could easily create a collection of videos that you find interesting on your TikTok or Instagram account and start bringing them up in conversations with people. Whether you're talking to them on a Discord server, a language exchange app, or in person at a social event. I promise you that people are more open to conversations than you think. You simply have to have something of substance to talk about. Now the second approach which is mentioning something about your surroundings, is even easier because all you have to do is look around. You don't have to have some deep, thought-provoking topics, and you don't even need to have all the same interests as the person you're talking to. The simple fact that you're in the same place and doing the same thing means that you already have something in common. All you need to learn is how to comment on your surroundings in a way that encourages the other person to respond to what you're saying. 
and use the power of follow-up questions and comments to keep the conversation going. So as Aya said, if you're at a bar, you can ask someone what they're drinking and what they recommend. If you're at a bookstore, you can ask someone about their book choices and recommendations. And if you're walking through a city, you can ask someone for directions or recommendations on where to eat or have fun, even if you're from that city and know exactly where you're going. You'd be surprised at how simple things like these can easily turn into longer conversations and exchange of phone numbers and the beginning of a new relationship. And I don't say that to be romantic, because as Aya said, this doesn't mean that it's always going to work. Some people won't be interested in talking to you at all, but you can't control that. The point is to simply create the opening for a conversation to occur, and you can't do that if you're not speaking to people. Now, obviously, you know your culture better than I do, and you know whether or not talking to strangers is seen as weird and unacceptable in your country. But I challenge you to give me the name of just one individual who wasn't called weird or stupid or crazy for doing the things they did to become successful. Give me the name of just one person who wasn't called crazy or stupid or weird for doing what they did in order to become successful. Getting out of your head and over the fear of people's judgment and or rejection will liberate you to do things like talking to more strangers. So remember, a simple thing you can do to make your conversations instantly more interesting is by starting in the middle. My second and third tips are a little bit controversial because they go against some common internet advice. Tip number two is don't wait to be directly asked a question before you contribute something to the conversation. If somebody tells me that their favorite color is blue, my first instinct as a conversationalist is to say, oh, that's great. My favorite color is red and start telling stories, anecdotes or say something related to a favorite color or something to keep the conversation going. I know some people that will actually sit there and stare at the other person saying nothing because they're waiting to be directly asked, how about you? What is your favorite color? And they're sitting in their feelings of the other person's rudeness of not asking. And so they're sitting there silent to prove a point, which is dumb. I feel like if you are that person, I hate to say it, you might actually be the bad conversationalist in this situation. Ideally, both people in the conversation will be contributing follow-up questions and stories and that kind of thing. But you really should be able to listen to the flow of the conversation and judge when it's a good time to say something instead of being told when it's a good time to say something. All right, my friends, now this is also something you may have heard me speak about before. It's generally speaking, extroverts don't need an invitation to start talking. It's my perception that they just assume that people want to hear what they have to say. So anytime something pops into their minds, they just say it. Now, how you feel about that is totally up to you, but regardless of how you feel, it's still something that introverts could learn to incorporate into the way they communicate with people. Now, I used to be one of those people who thought it was rude to constantly speak about oneself without ever inviting other people to speak about themselves. But it was through my study of the art of communication, my experience teaching English to countless people from around the world and countless conversations that I realized Everyone communicates in their own way. And you may think that your way of communicating is the correct way. But the reality is that your way is just what's most preferable to you. So if you're one of those people who feels that they need to be invited to speak, you might be waiting for an invitation that's never going to come. And you might be left thinking that the person you're speaking with is rude and self-centered. And that may be true. Some people really aren't interested in hearing what you have to say. They just like hearing themselves speak. But other people simply aren't accustomed to speaking with people who feel they need permission to share their thoughts and opinions. So if you don't volunteer your perspective, many people will just assume that you don't have one. Not because they're rude or self-obsessed, but rather because they're assuming that you're going to communicate in the same way they do. And this tip is very closely related to the third one, so let's listen to that now. Which brings me to tip number three. 
On the internet, we often hear people say that it's bad manners to respond to somebody's statement with a story about yourself to make everything all about you. I'm here to tell you that you should probably start telling those stories. This is especially helpful when you're talking to strangers and trying to find common ground with somebody that you don't already know. A lot of times that common ground is hidden and buried in the stories that you're afraid to tell for fear of sounding self-centered. I noticed this even before the pandemic that it's one of those things that the internet has an opinion about that is not necessarily the same opinion as the general population. A lot of times people do like to hear about your stories and your own experiences and that kind of thing. This is especially true when people are talking about positive experiences, places that they've traveled, things like that, and not necessarily true when people are talking about their trauma. Maybe read the room and see when it's a good time to keep things to yourself. I'm interested to hear from other people who are good at talking to strangers what they think the best tips are. All right, my friend. Now, as I was saying, you might think of it as self-centered to hear what someone says and then immediately start talking about yourself. But these days, I really think that it's all about balance. I honestly don't see why all of us can't simply validate what somebody's saying, ask them follow-up questions to get a better understanding of what they're saying and why they're saying it, and then share a personal story or opinion. Everybody wins in that scenario. In my opinion, we don't need to have an all-or-nothing mentality when talking to people. When everyone involved is respectful enough to listen attentively and feels free to express themselves, everyone wins. Which is why Aya is saying that the key here is to read the room. Now, to read the room essentially means to assess or evaluate and understand the emotions, attitudes, or atmosphere of a particular group of people in a given situation. This means being perceptive and sensitive to social cues or social signals and the general mood of the people you're interacting with. And this understanding can then inform how you should act or speak in that context. And this is a skill that introverts and extroverts alike should spend more time developing. Extroverts seem to have a very hard time reading the room and noticing when they're talking too much and boring their listeners to death. They'll just talk and talk and talk without giving a single thought to the context of the situation, how their words are being received, or whether the person they're talking to is actually interested in what they're saying. Now, introverts, on the other hand, have a really hard time understanding that even if people are genuinely interested in your thoughts and experiences, not everyone is going to beg you to share them in a conversation. Introverts tend to take a more measured approach to interactions with strangers and fail to realize that sometimes the best thing you can do is get out of your head and just let things flow naturally without taking any of it too seriously. Learn to accept that some conversations are casual and frankly, meaningless, while others are deep and introspective. And they both serve a purpose. And they both help you build rapport with the people you don't know very well. Some people's communication style revolves around responding to what's been said. So if you're not willing to volunteer information about yourself, people won't have much of a reason to take interest in who you are. Because as I said earlier, they might simply make the assumption that you're going to speak openly about yourself just like they do. So the purpose of sharing personal stories and opinions is to give people something to work with. A reason to focus on who you are and what it is you have to say. Now, I'll also say that communication, like any other art form, has no rules. There are only fundamentals to be mastered and styles to be developed and or adopted. So understand that you should take the tips in this episode with a grain of salt and put them into practice to see what works best for you. The point of this episode is not to tell you how to communicate. It's simply to encourage you to think about how you communicate and whether or not it's enabling you to get what you want out of interactions with people. So remember, the next time you want to start a conversation with a stranger, start in the middle. Have something interesting and or relevant to talk about. Also, don't wait for an invitation. Just assume that you have a right to speak. And finally, Share personal stories, share personal opinions, 
give people a reason to be interested in you. And you will quickly find out you're much more interesting than you think. I speak from experience when I say that doing these simple things will make your conversations a lot more interesting.